as you and I are talking in this town, pick up the papers read by many, both the New York Times and Washington Post have reviewed your new book. Do you tend to read reviews? Well, I read this one because I'm going to take some action against the Times. I don't quite know what, but uh, they're in for a bit of punishment. They gave the book, The Golden Age, to a British journalist who is Catholic, has no subjects that I can tell other than the glories of being and sufferings of being gay. And Marty Peretz of the New Republic brought him over to everyone's surprise uh, to edit the New Republic. I guess that didn't pan out. Now he's a freelance journalist. The Times wanted an all-out attack on the Golden Age, so they give it to somebody who knows no American history. And he makes so many mistakes, I forget what he says about me. The mistakes that he makes, no editor who knows anything would allow in their paper. He writes, it is silly when Gore Vidal says that the Japanese wanted to surrender before the atomic bomb at Hiroshima. Everybody knows they wanted to surrender. In May of 45, the bomb was August of 45. Every, everyone who knows anything about that war, he knows nothing knows the Japanese were trying to surrender. They were defeated. And the only sticking point was that Roosevelt had said unconditional surrender, as Lincoln had said in the Civil War. And they had a condition, which was they could retain the emperor. And uh, they were still arguing about that. Roosevelt is now dead. Harry Truman goes to Potsdam. He goes back, he wants to go back on all the agreements made at Yalta by Roosevelt. In the middle of his meetings with Stalin, and Stalin has promised to come into the war uh, against Japan, suddenly in the middle of the meetings he gets a message that a, a bomb has gone off near Los Alamos in the desert and the, and the uh, atom bomb works. He now knows that the war in Japan will be over any time he drops it. Meanwhile, the Japanese are trying to surrender and uh, they're dragging, the, we're dra dragging our feet and he wants to drop the bomb to frighten Stalin. That was, that was the whole point to the bomb. Japan was, there was no Tokyo. The B-29s had eliminated the city. So this was a very brutal act of, of diplomacy, I guess there's a polite word for it, to scare Stalin and to say, look, we're the masters of the world now. We have this extraordinary weapon and you don't. and It'll take you years because you're too primitive. Anyway, this joker who should not be allowed to write about these things or if he is he certainly should be heavily edited and corrected uh, doesn't know this he knows nothing indeed about the subject of the book which is Roosevelt administration and Harry Truman and Dean Acheson I have a marvelous aria by Herbert Hoover well I don't make up a Herbert Hoover aria or Roosevelt aria, I take it from what they've actually written or said. And it's a, it's a quite a passage. If you've got it, uh, he, he's, he's got it in his review. And I've come to quite admire Hoover in some ways. But Hoover was a very perceptive man. And um, now he acts as though, this reviewer, as though I have made up the speech for Hoover when Hoover himself wrote it. I am certain that the next war will, abs will transform us absolutely. And he means World War II. I see more power to the great corporations, more power to the government, less power to the people. That's what I fear. Because once this starts, it is irreversible. You can't extend the mastery of the government over the daily life of a people without making government the master of those people's souls and thoughts. The way the fascists and the Bolsheviks have done, in a serpentine way, Franklin is going in the very same direction that they have gone in, and I think he knows exactly what he's doing. Now, mind you, Herbert Hoover was a bitter man who had just been, had been defeated badly by uh, Roosevelt in the 1932 election. He was also very, very conservative, which I thought it was nice to give the conservative point of view, since I'm thought to be liberal. And so, uh, now you have a quotation from Herbert Hoover, and he thinks that I make up everything. And he's trying to tell, use the authority of the New York Times to say, oh, don't believe anything he says. 
Hoover never said that. That's Vidal talking. Well, this is saying that what I do is totally a fraud. And that's actionable.